Hey, I'm Jake. I make RPG supplements and videos about Pathfinder 2. I know this stuff, but mostly Pathfinder 2, because I love TTRPGs and especially uh, Pathfinder. We're going to be continuing with Howl of the Wild coverage, including the Hostility Host today. This is the archetype that gives you weird magical powers for attaching a slug to your body parts. Hostilies are amorphous organisms that combine characteristics of both plants and animals. Typically found in subterranean environments, they can share a symbiotic arrangement with circes. Yeah, the bug people. The circus. When a magic gathering node on a circe's body is damaged or absent, an hostile is placed on it like a bandage, and after several weeks... That must smell terrible. The creature fully fuses with its host and becomes a makeshift node, accumulating the magical nourishment that the Cirque needs to survive. With training, Cirques, and increasingly members of other species, can direct these tiny symbiotes to a variety of magical feats. I have a problem with this lore. How in the hell does another ancestry use this thing? Logically speaking, per the lore. Do you have nodes that need to be replaced because you're human with nodes? I don't think so. It's uncommon, and the access requires Cirque Ancestry, but that's just to remove the uncommon trait. Anybody could take this if you have special permission. But how the fuck does this make sense for any other ancestry if it's built into the archetype that they work with this ancestry? So I'm going to suggest ignoring that entirely, because otherwise this archetype doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm just going to say that this is generally the symbiote host archetype. It makes more sense to me. Although it is cute that the little picture they chose is a little, like, uh, sea sheep. They're adorable. It should be on your screen right now. They're freaking cute. They are. But, you know, eh. If you're a Cirque, sure, use that thing and attach the little goober to your shoulder plates. But if not, this is just, it's a, it's a magical alien monstrous who cares it's an excuse to have a symbiote dedication prerequisites trained in arcana or nature you've bonded with an attached symbiote known as an astili you can bond with only one astili at a time since the symbiote emits low frequency magical pulses that repel other astilis you become trained in astili lore if you were already trained you become an expert that's going to come up often astili lore it's lore about this archetype the Astili is a tiny creature grafted to your body. Page 97. Because there's new grafts in this book, which is neat. Like other grafts, it has no hit points or speeds of its own and can't be targeted separately. It can't be removed and dies when you do. In the event of your demise and resurrection, you can bond to a new Astili during a week of downtime, though you lose any abilities granted by your Astili bond during that time. Your Astili is obvious unless you attempt to cover it with clothing or armor. I think that should be true for any symbiote, like... Venom is pretty obviously Venom, and Carnage, and like any other symbiote in any sci-fi you've read, Wildstar was one that I liked a lot. Like when they got pissed at their symbiote, they would just like rip it off forcefully, because they're angry at it. <laughs> I'm somewhere. Your hostility is obvious unless you attempt to cover it with clothing or armor. In such a case, an onlooker can determine you're bonded to an hostility with a successful nature perception or circuit lore check against your deception DC. I think it could also allow hostility lore, because that's what this is for. Your hostility must be visible for you to use any of the actions it grants. Fine, I get it. There's a minor, minor, minor cost involved. Vulnerability. Your Astili is constantly siphoning ambient energy from the surroundings, granting you the repel ambient magic and spit ambient magic actions. All of this archetype is about a similar concept as the Cirque. This creature on your body feeds off of magic in the area. It doesn't have to be any specific kind of magic. And it doesn't say anything about not working in dead magic zones like the Mana Wastes. I would think it doesn't, but it doesn't say that. Repel ambient magic. One action. Concentrate trait. Your Astili glows green as it absorbs magic. Until the start of your next turn, you gain a plus one circumstance bonus to AC and saving throws against the next magical attack, cantrip, or spell that targets you. This bonus increases to plus two at twelfth level. While well, we're not holding our breath, we're getting plus one. You also gain spit ambient magic. It's one action. Concentrate magical frequency once per round. Effect. Your Astili flashes red as it regurgitates a dart of magic at a target within 30 feet. Is there a burping sound? There should be some weird sound. This magical dart deals 1d6 piercing damage 
basic reflex save against the higher of your class DC or spell DC. This damage increases by 1d6 at 6th level and every 4 levels thereafter. So, at 2nd level, really neat. For a dedication, you get a ranged attack. And it doesn't really have anything to do with ranged attacks as an archetype. It's just that that's a perk. You also get a lore that is very useful and repel ambient magic. I think that's really, really nice. The bonus to ACs and saving throws without using a spell is just one action and it lasts until the start of your next turn. Yeah, okay, you can do it every turn. It's basically like a sustain, but it's one action to do. That's powerful for a spell. So this is useful. And you shoot magic darts. Who doesn't want that? The remainder of this archetype is all about giving you random minor magical benefits. It has nothing to do, really, with having another creature attached to you. And it has nothing to do with the history of the Cirque. Or with an Ostili. So think of the rest of this archetype that I'm going to read to you as generally you have some specific link to magic and you or something attached to you is able to absorb and reuse magic. Sort of like the Spellfire Channeler or Spellfire Wielder from 3.5 D&D. A lot of flavors could fit this. Fourth level feat, Soothing Pulse. Your Astili can use its stored magic to help staunch your wounds, granting you the administer ambient magic action. That is a two action ability, it has the healing trait, frequency once per hour. Effect, your Astili pulses a calm lavender color as it converts stored magic into a curative balm. You regain 2d4 hit points, and you can immediately attempt a flat check to recover from persistent bleed damage with the DC reduced to 10. This healing increases by 2d4 at 8th level and every 4 levels thereafter. So basically, this is extremely useful outside of combat. If you have significant time, like overnight, you will almost definitely heal from any damage. Given enough time. So it's mostly going to be used to help with persistent bleed damage or in a pinch when two actions can't be used in any other effective way, which is rarely ever. So this is mostly outside of combat and helps with persistent bleed damage. Still nice to have a healing ability. Unless you magically heal people, then you don't give a damn. Next level four feet. Yes, hello. I love you too. Would you like to be part of the video again? No, you are the whole video, I know. Tactile magic feedback. Your Astili can sense nearby spellcasters. You gain an imprecise sense known as Spell Sense, which has a range of 60 feet and detects only creatures capable of casting spells, including creatures with innate spells. You gain a plus two circumstance bonus to recall knowledge checks about creatures you're detecting with Spell Sense. Yes, this might require at some point the Seek action, but it does not take an action to activate this ability. It is passive, out to 60 feet. And let's think about this for a moment, including creatures with innate spells. That is a lot of aberrations and undead and nearly all demons, devils, and angels. Plus anyone else capable of casting spells. This is fucking useful for anyone. Yeah, you stole my mouse pad. You're a jerk. Next feat, versatile mutation. Your Ostili's darts can deal different types of damage. When you spit ambient magic, the little dart spell, you can choose to have the Ostili deal bludgeoning or slashing damage instead of piercing damage. At 8th level, choose one of the following, acid, cold, electricity, fire, or sonic damage. When your Ostili spits ambient magic, it can deal that damage type instead and add that trait to the action. And adds that trait to the action. Special. You can take this feat a second time at 16th level. When you do, choose two additional energy types, from those available through this feat at 8th level. You can choose to have your Steely deal that damage type when it spits ambient magic. I have no problem with this. This is good. I think for me, thematically, I'd rather have it shoot fire or some sort of energy instead of a physical bolt. Because it's all about absorbing magic and reusing and redirecting magic for a variety of purposes. But it absorbs magic to generate darts... Sure, I guess you could work it in that, like, it grows its own darts that are filled with magic from the magic it eats, sort of like Cirque's Survive on Magic. Sure. 
but it makes more intuitive sense to me, especially if I'm reflavoring this as a symbiote archetype, to have it do an energy type of damage. So just talk to your GM, see if you can replace it with fire or electricity or something. If you care. If you don't, I'll shut up. Level 6 feet, Cloaking Pulse. Your Asteli can emit illusion magic to mask your position, granting you the Drape Ambient Magic action. It's one action, illusion. Frequency once per round. Effect, your Asteli turns clear as it converts its stored magic into a bubble of refracting light around you. You become hidden to all creatures until the end of your turn. If you strike a creature, that creature is off guard against that attack, and you then become observed. This is awesome. I mean, obviously, it's great for a rogue. It's great for anybody trying to make somebody off guard. So, I mean, it'd be good for anybody trying to crit. So many of these archetype feats work for a huge variety of builds. Next feat, Deflecting Pulse, level 6. Your Asteli can use its stored magic to protect you from other magic, granting you the turn aside ambient magic action. This is a one action ability with a concentrate trait. Your Asteli glows a faint yellow and as it establishes a barrier. Choose acid, cold, electricity, fire, or sonic damage. Until the beginning of your next turn, you gain resistance against the chosen damage type equal to half your level. This is good. It's useful for everyone. Again. This archetype so far is impressive. I thought I would be seeing some... I thought I'd be seeing some weird bug shenanigans because it mentions Cirque, but no, it's just generally magically useful. Next feat, level 6, Propulsive Mutation. Your Osteli can fire its dart farther. When you spit ambient magic, the range increases to 60 feet. Great. Useful. Good. Next feat, level 8, Chaining Mutation. The dart fired by your Asteli can ricochet to strike another creature. The first time each round that a target takes damage when you spit ambient magic, you can choose a second target within 20 feet of the first. That target is also affected by spit ambient magic. So you have to... So one person has to take damage, so they need to at least succeed and not critically succeed their saving throw. And then it bounces off of them, and somebody else has to roll their saving throw to see if they take damage too. It's not a lot of damage. But it's fun. And this makes it more useful. It's a good feat. <clears throat> Level 8 feat. Deadly Mutation. The dart fired by your Osteli is more dangerous. The damage dice of your spit ambient magic increases to d8s. And when a target critically fails its save against the ability, it also takes 1d6 persistent bleed damage. If you dealt the type of energy and damage with spit ambient magic, such as when dealing fire damage with versatile mutation, the persistent damage is a damage of that type instead of bleed. That makes perfect sense. Next feat, level 10, Spell Swallow. Your Osteli has grown strong enough to completely consume a spell cast at you, granting you the Devour Ambient Magic action. It's a reaction. Concentrate trait. Frequency once per day. Oh, that's sad. Trigger, a creature casts a spell with you as the only target. Effect, your Osteli radiates cyan light as its tentacle-like filters attempt to consume the magical effect. You can attempt to counteract the triggering spell with an arcana or nature check and a counteract rank equal to half your level. I guess the once per day isn't that big of a deal because even if you get in multiple fights during one single day, not everybody's going to target you specifically with a spell. So once per day I think is fine. It's nice to be able to counter a spell. Next feat, Spraying Mutation, level 10. Your Asteli can launch a multitude of darts at once over a short distance. When you spit ambient magic, you can have it affect all creatures within a 15-foot cone instead of the normal target. Awesome. I wish it was slightly bigger of a cone, but for beginning, changing it from single target, 15-foot cone makes perfect sense. It fits within the system. It's balanced. And it can be very useful. This class really doesn't fit a caster because a caster has other options to do their abilities with. It's sort of made to fit someone who doesn't have a lot of other magical options. Like, just having the sense spell casters and smell demons ability is really nice. And there are spells that do that. So, if you're a spell caster, you also don't need, like, a dart thing that's magical. You have those. So this is kind of meant for anybody else. 
The reason I mentioned that is that the 15-foot cone might require you to be really close to one or two t targets, which would not be a caster, normally speaking. So, yeah, that further enhances that this is for other people that can take a beating. Next feat, level 12, Cellular Reconstruction. It has the healing trait, and it's a reaction. Frequency once per day, trigger you fail a recovery check while dying. Your Osteli takes control of your nervous system and kicks your cellular functions into overdrive when you're about to die. You regain hit points equal to your level. For the next two rounds at the start of your turn, you regain hit points equal to half your level. The first time you regain hit points at the start of your turn, you reduce your wounded condition by one. That's the capstone for this archetype. And it's really good. This is useful for everyone. I'd like to not die. Thank you. I think that that feat is better than a few of the other ones. Granted, you have to wait a while, but at least it's not 18th level like some. All right, I'm going to read the inset panel, even though it might not apply to your theme for this archetype. Detached Ostilies. If your Ostili is ever removed forcibly from your body, which requires a successful medicine check against a hard DC of your level and 30 minutes of delicate surgery, you are fatigued and can't use any of your Ostili's actions until your Ostili is reattached. This requires you to hold your Ostili to the place from which it was detached for an uninterrupted hour. If the Ostili isn't reattached within 24 hours, it dies. I think it's a good rule of thumb for symbiotes in general. This is a really, really good opening attempt at a symbiote archetype. I think this works really well for what it, tri what it tries to do, which is basically just utility using the theme of magic. I like it. I think it's a good archetype. I think a lot of people can take it that aren't Cirques. Sure, it makes thematic sense for Cirque if you follow the lore of this. But it's not essential. Just make it what you want it to be. And the abilities are pretty cool. I have, I rarely have no complaints about an archetype. I guess I have minor wishes about this archetype. Like, I wish the administer ambient magic healed you for more than 2d4 hit points every hour. It's just not that great. It's not, it's not that worth taking it. But I would not remove any of these abilities. I think they're good. And they're useful. Thank you for letting me borrow your faces. Like I'm borrowing his face. He doesn't mind, though. You might mind. I don't know. I'm going to be continuing my Howl the Wild series. Uh, let me know if you would like me to, like, interrupt the Howl the Wild series with the commander, because it's already done. I just... Howl the Wild came out before I got to release it. So let me know if you want to hear that now. And thank you for being a patron, if you are. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. A lot. And if any of you watching who aren't patrons are interested in finding out what the benefits of patronage are, basically helping out the channel, randomly getting free dice, and, like, chatting with us together on Discord, you can click on Patreon link below. There's also the link to the Howl of the Wild book below, if you want to get it. Everybody should get this book. It is so useful for players and, like, interesting and creative spawning for GMs. Like, it has ideas that are very fun and interesting. I haven't covered the GM stuff much, but I could. There's just mostly players out there, so these matter more. And there hasn't been, like, a player-focused book in a while, and this is a really good one for players, so I want to focus on the player stuff. Because they're good options. If you want to see the rest of the Howl of the Wild videos, the playlist for Howl of the Wild's here. If you don't, then you can look at my build videos. They're here and fun. And more will be coming out after I'm done with Howl of the Wild. I have several in the works. Okay, thanks. Bye. Love you. Note loves you, too. He says, feed me, bastard. <laughs>